Every game needs a publisher, whether you do it yourself or hire another company to do it for you. But the main question that arises here is what is better? Publishing the game yourself or collaborating with a publisher? Well, first, I want to mention the pros and cons of self-publishing versus using a publisher. If you are self-publishing a game, you are completely responsible for the success or failure of your game. You will get to retain creative freedom over your work, which is really important. You have flexible deadlines and self-determined milestones, which is also important. You have less pressure from external stakeholders and other third parties. You will get a larger share of the overall profits, which means cash in your pocket. You will get a sense of pride in taking your game from start to finish by yourself and you will have the ability to work to your own rhythm. If, however, you choose to go with a publisher, you will get access to a large pool of resources and contacts from marketing support to distribution networks. Your game will go through extensive testing and prototype phases according to the publisher's requirements and methods that you too will agree on. You will have the ability to learn from your publisher's vast experience and knowledge base. You will get access to a wealth of data and analytics you will get the sense of achievement of being part of a prestigious publishing organization, but all this comes with a price. You get to keep a percentage of the overall earnings of your game depending on your agreement with your publisher. So let's go through this part by part and explain in more detail the pros and cons of self-publishing versus using a publisher. In the world where we live now, it has never been easier to self-publish a game. With developers having access to Steam and app stores, but also a bunch of online resources and guidelines. However, with this ease comes competition, and as you may be aware, the market has never been more competitive. And not only that, but you will also find a lot of beginners following simple tutorials and then publish the game they create from those simple tutorials. This only adds more in the river of never-ending pool of games that you can find online, which makes it more difficult for people to find a good quality game like yours. Now, I know that someone will say, yes, but if your game has good reviews and people are playing it, then the App Store or Steam will recommend it to people and that's how they will find it. That's true, but in order for your game to be played and get good reviews, people need to find it first when you publish it in the initial stage. And that's the hard part. You see, the days where you just create a game, upload it on the game store, click the publish button, and then downloads start coming in like crazy are over. Just think about it. When's the last time you saw a success story similar like Flappy Bird? Now you see what I'm talking about. So in order to get people to download your game, you are the one who is responsible for all the marketing. And in traditional marketing, you would need to spend money on ads to get people to download your game. And even this is not a guarantee that people will download your game or even play it after they download it. Now, don't think that it's impossible to get downloads if you market your game by yourself. What I was talking so far was traditional marketing or paid marketing, but there is another more effective way how you can market your game, which is building an audience. And this is totally free. I'm not going to go into details about this because it's a topic on its own, but the main point is that you build a following of people while you are creating your game and these people will download and buy your game. And this is not hard to do in the world of social media where we live today. But if you choose to go with a publisher, then marketing your game is not your concern. The publisher will do all the work to get your game in front of the right people. They will use their distribution network and their long life fans who are playing every game that the company publishes. However, this also comes with a price. 
If all the marketing is done by the publisher, then you will not learn anything about marketing. And if down the road you decide to go alone and stop working with a publisher, then you will have to rely on your own marketing to get your games out there. So even if your publisher is doing the heavy work of spreading the word about your game, you should also do your own marketing, if nothing else, just for the experience and the knowledge that you will gain because who knows if you might need it in the future. Now let's talk about creating the game part. Because creating a game is all about your imagination and bringing to life the idea that you have in your head. And if you create a game on your own, then you are free to do whatever you want. You can add dragons, knights, fairies, vampires, whatever comes to your mind, you can add that in your game. Of course, you will need to learn how to create game assets, be that 2D or 3D, or you can simply hire a freelancer. But if you are low on cash, you can also collaborate with a friend and let him create the game assets for your game. And depending on the scope of your game, it can take a while to create the appropriate game assets, especially if you are creating a 3D game. Because it takes time to create high quality and good looking 3D models, and you need to think about optimizing the assets so that your game doesn't lag in performance because of high poly assets. However, if you are working with a publisher, you will get access to their asset library and they will put their artists at your disposal. This can significantly lower the time you need to create the assets and build your game overall. Plus, the assets that you get from the publisher are created by experienced artists and they know how to optimize them so that your game doesn't lag in performance. Also, when you are creating a game by yourself, you are totally flexible when you want to finish your game. This is good because you don't have pressure from third parties to finish the game, which can cause you to make mistakes. On the other hand, you need to be self-disciplined and know when the time is right to publish your game. While this might sound silly to you, there are a lot of developers who never publish their games just because they think they need to add one more thing to it to make it better. And that one more thing turns into another thing and so on. Not to mention all the testing that is involved in that process. Because you can't just create a game and not test it. In fact, testing is a big part of game development and you need to test your game as often as you can. This is important because you can't make any change to your game without testing it out to see if it fits with the already created features of your game because it can happen easily that your code breaks down and that's why the more tests you perform, the better your game will be. That's also the reason why you should use Git and version control because it enables you to revert back to the previous saved state of your game where the code didn't break. Now, when you are working with a publisher, all these things become a lot easier. The publisher already has a team of people who will test play your game whenever you add or change any feature. This way, you can easily spot bugs in your code and proceed to fix them. Also, you will get feedback from the people who are testing your game, if the game is playable, how the gameplay feels, and what you can change in the game. But all this comes with a price, and that is, you have a deadline that you need to respect. The publisher will ask from you to finish the game in a certain deadline and this might and might not be a problem for you. If the release date is not that important to your publisher, then you have nothing to worry about. But usually game publishers are in a huge hurry to get the game out there as soon as possible because the sooner they get the game out there, the sooner the money will start kicking in. This might feel as a burden to you because you will need to work under pressure and make sure that you don't make mistakes under that pressure. But again, you will have the publisher and their team on your side to help you out. Now the most important part comes into play, the revenue that your game earns. When you publish a game by yourself, then you take all the profit minus the percentage that the app stores or Steam takes from every sale. 
So after they're cut, you get to keep all the revenue, which is the most rewarding part of creating a game. This is especially useful if you spent a few years creating your game and all that money at the end comes as a reward. But if you are working with a publisher, then you share your game revenue with them. Now, because of all the help that you get from the publisher, ranging from game assets to game testers to designers and so on, they will get a larger cut of your game than you. And this is if the publisher is providing all these things. Because there are publishers who will not provide you any of the mentioned things and yet demand a large cut of the revenue from your game. And this is the part where you need to be extra careful. When signing a contract with a publisher, make sure that you carefully review all the parts in it. Make sure that you know and understand every point in the contract so that you don't regret it later on. I even advise that you get a lawyer on your side to read the contract and explain it to you because if you don't have experience in dealing with publishers, it can happen that they take advantage of you. And since you signed the contract, there is nothing you can do. This unfortunately is the bad side of game development where publishers who don't have good intentions in helping indie developers take advantage of them to earn money from the games these indie developers make. So an extra lesson is be careful who you choose as a publisher for your game. Make sure that you do extra research on the company and if possible find people who have dealt with the company in the past and get to know their experience with them. Also, if you have a game idea that is not finished, don't present it to any publisher company without signing a contract because it's not rare that these companies refuse your game idea because they find it not good, in quotes, or not fun to play. And then a few weeks later, you find out that the company created a game from the idea that you presented. And since you didn't sign a contract, and you don't have any proof that they stole the idea from you, they get to keep all the profits from your game idea. So depending on your situation and what you want to achieve with your game, you now have a clear picture what is the difference between self-publishing versus using a publisher. Just remember to think carefully what you want to do because it can be a game changer for your game development career. If you like this video, make sure that you hit that thumbs up, comment and share the video for others to see. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I have a few links in the description of the video that can help you become a pro game developer, so make sure to check them out. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video.